This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome listeners, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader who's going through this 15 book series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we are covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan of the series, and he's acting as my tour guide on this journey. We also want to acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood. In this episode, we're talking about chapters 47 and 48 of The Dragon Reborn. Yeah, so chapter 47 is To Race the Shadow, and chapter 48 is Following the Craft. Yeah. And I gotta say, with Matt's storyline, we are like zip-zapping away, oh like we're gosh. moving forward. I can't believe it. Like, have a nap. There's no time. There's... <laughs> seriously though yeah like it's lay like down a have a rest man huge rush we gotta do stuff there's like things happening places to go yeah people to rescue you know it all just we gotta go get it done so oh my gosh yeah so we get a lot of matt mm-hmm. and we get a little bit of a Gwen and the girls a little bit of a Gwen, but i have to say i'm not a Gwen's fan this chapter. Yeah, we got to talk about the whole, you know, shift in the dynamics between the girls. You so, mean the zero communication between the girls? The issues with communication. We'll call it that. That's the like a zero nice way. <laughs> nothing, terrible communication. It's pretty good. I like it. It's awful. Yeah. So my fun fact is a little bit more geared towards the second chapter with following the craft. Because I had to kind of look up a little bit more about witches, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. So, I mean, the craft. This is kind of what the fun fact is about because I was doing a little bit of research on what the craft could possibly mean. And there's witches, midwives, herbal healers, medicine women, like mother yeah, somethings. Yeah, I was actually going to say medicine woman. That's yeah. like what I thought of. So they all have lots of history in common. And they all kind of stem from the same thing, which is the craft. So it goes across all the industries, basically. So like the nature of medicine, healing, you know, taking care of the sick, the injured, the pregnant, delivering children. We get a whole bunch of like information from Nynaeve, but it's all related. And I really like how RJ does like a neat job of weaving everything kind of together in Wheel of Time because we've got wisdoms, we've got Aes Sedai, we've heard of wise ones, we've got all sorts of mother something. Listening to the wind. Listening to the wind, like all sorts of different things that are all kind of interconnected in some fashion or another. Like we don't know and to the degree. And then it just sort of depends on which like culture. Yeah, and like from. where you are, but there's always these people in all the different cultures. Yeah. So witchcraft has a really unique history because of the connotations that are like popularized nowadays with, you know, magic and cauldrons and evil and all that stuff. Sure, yep. When you think of it, but the roots and origins of the word witchcraft are well over a thousand years old and witch comes from Wicca in Old English, which is why that's still what it's called in some circles. Mm -hmm. But the word Wicca has roots in the words wit, wise, and wisdom. So witchcraft is literally the craft of the wise. Cool. Yeah, so the fun fact, just kind of connecting all those, these are all wise women. Right, and I have to tell you, when I read the chapter title, Following the Craft, Sure. I thought of... The Rivercraft? Yeah, the Rivercraft. Oh, okay, I okay. I that someone was going to be chasing a boat somewhere. A boat, because not that kind of craft. Not that kind of craft. The witchy kind of craft. The other kind of craft. Yeah. Okay, so we got... Quite a bit to talk about, so let's get right into it. Last yeah. time, Matt got the letter from Elaine to Morgays by reusing Rand's method of wall climbing. Yeah, which he didn't believe, but now he believes. Right, and Morgays seems to be in some kind of trouble with this Lord Gabriel. Yep. And he's clearly a bad guy, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, watch out. Yeah, and she's, like, sending out, like, signals for help kind of, sort of. Yes. Like, something's and going on. And we definitely get that clarification right away here. Oh, yes. So, Nynaeve, Elaine, and Egwene are on their way to Tyr on the world's slowest boat. Plus, we find out that the bad guy, who's now the advisor to Morgays, has a hit out on Elaine and the girls. Yeah, and, I mean, you keep saying, saying bad guy here. Yeah. But, like... You were, you were throwing around the word forsaken last time. I was. Time. I, I'll explain why I've switched you to bad You switch guy. it to just bad guy? I'll, Not I'll, necessarily? I'll explain it. Okay, okay. Some I just, thi- I noticed that change in language. Some things came up for me this chapter. Okay, I like that. I have to tell you. Okay. So, chapter 47, to race the shadow, which I guess is what Matt is doing? Yeah, he's racing the shadow 
to get to the girls before this Komar guy does. Before the dark friends do. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we get the dice picture, which is obviously Matt doing stuff. So we pick up in Matt's point of view, and he's being escorted out of the palace by Talonvor, who seems to want to have a word with him. Oh, he does. He's like curious about this fella. A little bit. And so on their way out, they see rat-faced guard guy. Yeah, who's also still not happy. Yeah, and Talonvor just tells him off, which is nice. It's like a little bit of a yeah. redemption for Matt Well, we got here. the like the little, you know, I don't know what I want to call jab. it. The jab, yeah, from yeah. last chapter where Talonvor was like, yeah, this guy's a rat. So. Yeah. <laughs> so Talonvor walks with Matt, surprising him, and asks him about his time in Tarvalin, and he wants to know if Matt knows this Sherry Am, or if talking with her in her study means anything to him. See, that's the thing. Yeah. Like Talonvor's, Talonvor's picking up something. Like that's a weird thing to he say. He knows Morgay's quite well. Turns out, yeah, I think. Well, he's been there seemingly for quite a long time. I know, which I was thrown by because Matt keeps describing him as the young officer. Yeah, but well, like yeah. young in comparison to like old guy officers, probably. I guess. Yeah. So not like really young, probably just like you know. I don't. It's hard to explain. I know. Right? I so. know. I know. Okay. So Matt says no. He didn't learn anything. He was only there to see his sister. He doesn't know. But then he gets curious and sort of goes, "Well, should it mean something?" Yeah. Like how much is Talonvor really going to tell you, Matt? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. But well, it's, it's kind of like Talonvor's picked up on some weird vibes too. Like he clearly doesn't like the situation Morgays is in. Right. But then Talonvor thinks that. Sometimes it seems like Morgays is trying to say something, and he asks Matt if he really is a loyal Andor man. Yeah, yeah. And Matt says the wrong thing here. He does. <laughs> he thinks it's the right thing. He's trying. He just doesn't know enough. Yeah, well, it kind you of know? it's a callback to what Matt said last chapter too. Yes. Like if I had been here during the winter. Oh, I would have supported Gabriel too. Sure, but that's the wrong thing to say. Yeah, it's not because for everyone more. who is in Camelin, who's like a loyal queen's queen's man, is yep. that what it is, they call themselves? That's what it is. None of them, I feel like, actually want to support this Gabriel. Oh yeah, like the queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Loyal queens men. So don't to be support like, Gabriel. oh yeah, I'm a loyal queens man. I support Gabriel. Like it just is a contradiction. Yeah, because Gabriel's replaced half the guard. Yeah, with, with his a own bunch staff. of fucking dark friends. <laughs> so that's bad. See? Yeah. See? Told you. Bad there, guy. There you go. Bad guy. Okay. Yeah. So the wrong thing that Matt says is that he serves more gays and Gabriel. And so then he asks Talonvor if he's a loyal Andor man. Flip the flip question. It. Yeah, That's smart. right. Yeah. Good. And then... Talonvor responds quite sharply about being loyal to Morgays with his life and then leaves. Yeah, that's like a definite distinction too. Yes. Talonvor on Morgays' side. Yes. Okay. And that's it. That's it. No one else's. No. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so Matt turns to go and thinks to himself about like needing to save these women because they are fools who need him to stop their bacon from burning. Just a bunch of <laughs> crap quite honestly well okay kind of sorta they're in a bad <laughs> spot right now they're walking into they a trap they are a hundred percent aware of the bad spot that they're in but okay, they wait, don't wait, know- wait no 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 yeah, yeah they are 95 percent aware but this is the issue because they know that there's like a trap that we're pretty sure land fear is setting up but like this dark friend guy who you are now questioning if he's a forsaken Mm -hmm. is putting a hit on an elaine so it doesn't seem like the girls know about this comar coming no they definitely don't know that there's like two different plans going on here they know of gray men trying to kill them they know of people trying to sell them to merdral yeah they know of the black asia like they know exactly that there's danger but they don't know that comar is coming for them yeah but so so Matt's got to go do something. No. You don't think Matt I'm... should go to save the girls? You think Matt should just like be like, whatever. No, I like that get he's murdered. doing it. It's definitely a friendship thing. I appreciate the loyalty. Doesn't sound like you appreciate but it. the way he's saying fool girls, like... Well, that's his whole thing, though. It's yeah, like in his I head, know. it's always like, don't help people without getting paid. But then he immediately helps people without getting paid. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So here's the thing, though. Yeah. You know the thing. I kind of know the thing, but, you know. 
I have to say the thing. I guess I have so. <laughs> to say it. Like, it's nice. It's good that he's going. I'm on team Matt Save the Girls. Matt's not going to save the girls. It doesn't matter if he does it. It's the <laughs> attempt. It's the effort. I suppose so. But it just bothers me that he thinks they need rescuing. Like, there's some, like, damsels in distress. Although, they are quite stupid and probably do need <laughs> saving. That's besides the point. Do we need to revisit those Aiel chapters? Oh, yeah, those <laughs> were, were just, so, like, walking through the brush? Those were so bad. Yeah. They are quite stupid. But... Matt's not smarter. Yeah, I was going to say, like, Matt's not the sharpest guy no. either. So it's like, they're all kind of stumbling through this. Not very well okay, together. Okay, fine. Matt, go say, go help your friends. Yes, like, Whatever. Got you on team Matt. <laughs> okay. So Matt gets back to the inn and announces that he'll be leaving for tear just as soon as he eats something. No time to explain. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom asks what his hurry is, but then Gil wants to know if he delivered the letter and if it has soothed more gays yeah so matt asks gil about gabriel and we find out that he has come from the west during the winter somewhere out of the two rivers which well, is he's kind just kind of weird he doesn't say that it's out of the two rivers he says maybe it's the two rivers because it's somewhere west and he's never heard of anyone coming out from like the west mm -hmm. so that's why he's like oh maybe you guys have lords out there but i don't know okay so this is my sketchy fact number one okay do you think this is like Tam, Gabriel's Tam somehow? A hundred percent not. Okay, okay. I'm just guessing. What are you talking about? I don't about? know. I have no idea where you're going with this. Well, you know who was over in the West just before winter? No. The Shanchen. That's like further West. Yeah, from the West. Okay, you got to give me more here. That's all I got. What do you mean? I'm so putting it in <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, so is Gabriel a Shanchen? <laughs> Maybe. A Shanchen lord that's like... Being controlled by a Forsaken, perhaps? Who's controlling more days in turn? Friend, a dark friend, Shan Chen. Okay. Perhaps. You're kind of going out there with the prediction here. A like, little bit. I feel bit. like this is a half-hearted... It's you haven't super fully... half-hearted. Okay. It's literally nothing. It's... You just don't like the whole, it's not Forsaken? It might be. Okay. I'm sure I, that's probably what it is, but I also need to explore... Other options. I Other get options. that. I, I get gotta that. throw some stuff at the wall, Brett. And you know the whole it might be a Sean Chan Lord in disguise slash controlled. Yep. We did get that. Vision. All of these lords might be Sean Chen lords in Ilian and Tyr and sure. Kim. Now it's all the Sean Chen wow. and it's not for <laughs> Good prediction. No. <laughs> no. This is just like a Oh, it came from the West. And That's it seems fair. super vague. But maybe it's a tidbit for me and I just needed to note it. That's fair. You know what? That's a good point because we're pretty sure the Sean Chen are coming back. We don't know how or when or why or what. So, And we don't know if they actually totally. turned around yeah. and left for like a long time. That's true. We have no idea where they are or what happened with them. Or what the deal is. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. And the fact that they hate the Aes Sedai so much, right? Like, That's true. The Shanchen hate the Aes Sedai. They do. They want to chain them all. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hate them in the I want to enslave you kind of way. Yep. Okay. Or kill them all, like the guy from Tyr. That's true. They Killing works too. Yep. Okay. So, I mean, okay, that's just one instance. I, I have like another it. one later on this episode. Oh my God. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> So Matt says, no, we don't have any lords in the two rivers. Yeah. Maybe somewhere around Bear Lawn, but probably not. And then Gil's just like, I don't know, country lords. Yeah, so, it's like someone from not here. Yeah, which is definitely accurate. Not here as in, like, <laughs> maybe a different world completely. Well, I don't know where the Forsaken are from. What do you mean? Where they were locked up. Like, they're not really Bound from... in Shale Ghoul. Yeah, exactly. There. Yeah, and then they got, like, released. Okay. Or, like broke free whatever so i don't actually get any of okay that, I, <laughs> I just nod and smile when you explain things oh like man that. okay okay so it all started three thousand no we're not gonna oh, do that okay <laughs> nope so gabriel shows up when Morgays is in Tarvalin. Yeah. Which is important to note because everyone was all unsettled and all that crap there were riots and all sorts of stuff and gabriel essentially fixed that like, he made himself the leader of the faction that supported Morgays, and when she got back, she gave him Elida's position. Yeah. And we get that Gareth Bryn didn't like his methods. Yes, and so he got retired 
which maybe means kill. He's dead. We, it's okay. so sad. But let's kind of let's kind of revisit that because yeah. Gabriel's plan here, from what it sounds like, what he did. So we know that when Ran and Matt were originally in Camelin, mm-hmm. there were riots going on, and then it seems like they died down. And then when Morgays left to go check on Elaine, then the riots started. Back up. They pop back up, and Gabriel happens to be there to support a faction. That's yeah. four more gays, and then he suppresses it all. But by the time she gets back, and then she's like, "Hey, be my boyfriend slash advisor." Right. So yeah, it's kind of questionable. It kind of sounds like Orban, you know, Lord Orban, who like fought the twenty Aiel and got wounded in the battle. It's all just like a too fanciful tale oh, that like doesn't yeah, quite line yeah, up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Except that I think that that's what happened. What? Well, like he showed up. And like, quote, settled things. Yeah. But by putting people to the question. That's true, just like killing whatever people. Whatever the hell so. that means, right? Yeah. So that's another point too, because didn't the Shanshin have like some sort of questioners? Like I know the White Cloaks did, like for sure they have questioners. But the yeah. Shanshin had, it was very similar to the White Cloaks, right? Yeah. So they had the Seekers for Truth. Right. So in The Great Hunt, we learned about the Empress's listeners who could be anywhere, yeah, like yeah. spying, basically, and even Turak's manservant, Huan, could have been one. Yeah. And then we found out that, like, anybody can wake up to find themselves already handed over to these Seekers for Truth, who basically did the same kind of torture, force confession type of thing mm. that the White Cloak Questioners sounds like they do. Or it sounds so, like this sort of, like, being put to the question. Yeah, it's like, we're going to get you it's to say all... what we want you to say. Yeah. Or kill you. Yeah, or yeah. and kill you. And kill you. Yeah, gotcha. you die anyways. <laughs> it's just like what you say before that happens. Okay, so that's just another side thing about how this guy has something similar with the Shanchen. Gotcha. Okay. So here we get some information about the royalty structure. A little a bit. A little bit. Yeah. So if Gabriel marries Morgays, but then Morgays and Elaine both die... Would he be king? Yeah. That's Matt's question. It's a fair question because Matt's trying to figure out what the menu, like the like, game plan why? is here. Why yeah. kill Elaine and why manipulate Morghese in this way? And so the answer is no, not really because Andor has always had a queen. Yeah. And there is a cousin, Lady Dylan, who is Morghese's closest relative who would take the throne yeah so basically next in line and there wouldn't be a succession war like with the whole tigraine business yeah because there's someone alive to take the place basically the place yeah but i mean this is the whole flip side is like if gabriel is actually a forsaken does any of that structure matter no no because he's like taking this position by force it seems yeah so i mean or just being very charismatic like who knows yeah probably not that but D- Dylan would keep him or could keep him on as an advisor or marry him if Morgase has had like a child by him. Yeah, just like strengthen the line. Yeah, but that would make him prince consort at best, not king. Yes. So it's like from the l- rules of lineage and succession right now, it doesn't seem like Gabriel could become a king. No, but he could have this position of power. Which is, yeah. In the court, which might sometimes even be better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So ask more death. It's kind of like you don't want to be the main target being the yeah. king or the queen. You want to be like the person behind that person so mm-hmm. you don't get killed first. Yeah, acknowledge what I said. Yeah. Ask more death. Ah, it's smart. Yes. Advisor. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Whoa. No. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, it sounded like you kind of maybe said no, something there. No, no, no. I was just comparing because that guy is, you know, obviously. Gabriel's Gabe, not more death somehow? Uh, no. Okay. That one is a no. <laughs> okay. We got a very, like, distinct description of Very, Ordeath, very. So. so, Matt wants to know why Gil seems so interested in Gabriel. And he says that, like, he supposes he doesn't really like the man, you know, and he doesn't really like the men he's brought in. Plus, he keeps having these bad dreams since he showed up. Heard that before. And that's not good. Yeah. So, and? this is another point towards it, like, leaning my little... If I have, like, a meter, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I have Shanchen on one side and Forsaken on the other... Which way? Is it in the middle, or is now it, Now like... it's going more towards Forsaken, because it's clearly this, like, dream world Forsaken And he also said business. that there's too many people muttering in corners, and that was one of the dis- distinct features of the other Alien, cities. yeah. A lot of people look angry. Right. 
And then Gil asks why Matt is so interested, and he says, well, he plans to murder Elaine and Egwene and Nynaeve. Yeah, so, okay, let's just go ahead and tell Gil what's happening. Yeah. Well, I trust him. It's no, fine. I get it, but it's like previously Matt lied to him about, like, what was in the letter and all that, too. And he didn't tell That's him initially. True, but first he got a bunch of the information he wanted, and then he told him. Yeah, yeah. so, okay. <laughs> so Matt says he overheard him talking with this Komar guy, but Gil is like, oh my god, did you tell Morgays? Yeah. <laughs> it's a really funny, like, thing he says. And then Matt gets all sarcastic, which <laughs> yeah. is so funny. He's like, oh yeah, I totally told her. Yeah. Yeah, while she's, like, mooning over this Gabriel guy while he's standing right there, I said, hey, Morgays, this guy, yeah. who you're clearly in love with, <laughs> wants to murder your daughter. Ha, hilarious. <laughs> uh, so no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No. So Gil wants to help in some way, but he hasn't held a sword since the Aiel War, and Tom says rumors man yeah well hey he's a vet so that's pretty cool that he fought in the IEL war yeah so i feel like a lot of them didn't really have a choice it was probably like a oh, drafting yeah. situation of course but it's just yeah. like but well, we did meet a previous innkeeper who was like oh i wish i could have fought but my back oh yeah hurts. that guy was the worst yeah <laughs> i don't like, even uh, remember who that was but it's just some other innkeeper that i just remembered right now so yeah <laughs> i don't know his name or anything yeah he had but... <laughs> some excuse was that the one um from in like Gildan or wherever they were, somewhere like that. Yeah, I With think it was Maureen one of those ones. Down, down over there. Yeah, he's like, oh, I would have been there fighting, but my back. Yeah. <laughs> so Gil knows just who to tell to spread these rumors. Yeah, Kathy, Chatty Kathy. Chatty Kathy, that's yep. her name. <laughs> and Tom warns him to make sure that it can't be traced back to him. Makes sense. And this is a little worrisome for me because okay. he's gonna think that it can't be traced back to him. But it will be able to. Okay, okay, okay. Because his rationale here, he says, don't worry. I've heard others tell me my own dreams back to me as if they had them themselves. So, like, the rumors are all stirring and going crazy. And there's no way anything's coming back at me. But really, all these people are just having the same dreams. Yeah, it's the exact same, like, Nieta and Billy situation. It's the exact so. same thing. Except now, this will be able to be traced back to Gil. Oh, yeah, because it's like a unique start the rumor. rumor. It's very unique. And it's, it's not everybody having no. it. No. That's I, bad. So then are you call, are you calling Gil dying in the next, like... Dying? Getting um, murdered? No. I don't know why I keep saying murdered and, like, killed. But it's like, there could be other stuff, you know. Yeah. But I'm just, that's where I'm my brain's going. I'm just saying that it might be bad. It also might be, like, literally nothing. Could be nothing. Okay, okay. But it sounds like... It might be bad for him. Yeah, spreading rumors. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So Matt asks Tom if he's still in love with more gays, and Tom basically says no, but then a roundabout way, he sort of says yes, but the passion is gone. It makes sense, because he does point out, like, it was 15 years ago yeah. that he had that, like, kind of fling love affair, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but, but great love of your life, I mean. Well, you know. Anyway, he says the passion is gone. Yeah. <laughs> and Matt thought Tom would go running to the palace to warn her. And he says something very wise. What does he say? He says, men forget, but never forgive. And women forgive, but never forget. A piece of wisdom there. I like that, yeah. actually, because okay. it's very accurate. Yeah, I agree. In my world, yes, in my yeah. opinion, that is... Uh, there's never, like, a blanket statement set that's right for everybody, but, like, you could get a I, large group of people into that one. I so. completely see the truth in that. Yes, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So he's basically like, oh, yeah, she'll say she's forgiven me and give me on the cheek and, you know, feed me a <laughs> meal... And then she'll have me to the headsman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because she's still holding that grudge. For sure. Because she hasn't forgotten. <laughs> People don't forget. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like eight years ago. <laughs> so then Tom asks Matt if he'll wait to leave tomorrow because he wants to get a good night's sleep first. And then Matt is super surprised that Tom wants to go with him. Yeah, well, this the is... The adventures of Matt and Tom continue. They do. And this is kind of like a callback to, like, even last chapter we were talking about it, how Tom's attitude is a little bit shifting. Yeah. He initially wanted to come to Caimlin because he was like, ah, it serves Basically, me right. Basically, like, get my head cut it's off. It's a death sentence. Yeah. And now he's like, yeah, I got to get the hell well, out of here. He's decided like, he doesn't want his head cut off. And yeah. Tyr seems safer than Caimlin. Plus, he's fond of those girls and wants to help save them. Hey, how and about that? And I trust Tom saving these girls a hell of a lot more <laughs> than I trust Matt saving these girls. Okay. Let me 
tell you. Not that anyone needs saving or rescuing, except these girls do because they're so stupid. But Tom will maybe Tom yeah. will provide. I think help <laughs> wisdom matt's, matt's not a matt's not a planner i would say like no. he doesn't like strategize and think things through to the end although he does have his luck he does have his luck yeah, yeah. okay okay sometimes impulsivity can be a positive thing like think about Perrin, who sits and thinks about everything for way too long all the time that's true and then the second he does anything impulsive it's like that's when interesting and good stuff happens yeah yeah in story wise but so i i need you to kind of make a judgment call here because we've got the girls on one hand we got matt and tom on the other yeah are you calling that they are going to be able to save the girls or are you calling that they're not gonna be in the position to save them or I like think, it's not gonna go through I that think way here's the place to be yeah and i think it's going to actually be quite reminiscent of falma how so? Well, they're all sort of there, but no one really can Keep help missing each anyone. Other? Yeah. Everyone's just Everyone like doing their own thing. Everyone has this idea that they're going to help someone. Like Rand. He's like, like Rand, I got to save Egwene. Doesn't even come close to it. No, instead, they blow the horn of Valir <laughs> and he fights Beelzemon in the sky. Yeah, so, who would have guessed it? <laughs> what a twist. So, I mean, I think it'll be something similar like that. Okay, like so it's all, like not even they'll close. They'll all be there yeah. and they might somehow stumble upon helping them somehow they'll see each other down like a hallway or something yeah like... <laughs> or like matt or tom will accidentally like murder komar like by accident <laughs> or like actually like see leandrin and and have no idea who she is but then like murder her by accident okay. you know they'll help in a way where they don't that's like my prediction is it's going to be like a very three stooges type of saving. That's so funny. Okay. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's good. Okay. Like they're going to miss each other, but still. I gotcha. I hundred okay. percent. I'm on board. Okay. So Matt says, nope, sorry, leaving today. And they decide that a ship from Erangel will be the fastest way. Yeah. And that makes sense. So they got to turn around. Back the way they came. Right back the way they came. Gil says he will get their meal now and matt throws him the bag of coins that gabriel gave him yeah the 10 gold pieces and says he has a wager against gabriel and he always wins that's the race against the shadow there we go there you go chapter title yeah why is he throwing away his money though so if you do recall well he's got lots but yeah, i know but recall the dream that perrin had about matt rattling a dice cup dicing with Baalzaman. yeah and perrin was like don't do it man yeah. But that was kind of like the whole, like, he's and racing literally or in or... three seconds from now, we're going to talk about Egwene's dreams, who also has a dream about Matt dicing with Beelzemon. Something similar. Yeah. Hey, did you uh, catch uh, what Gil said about Komar on why he got kicked off the guard? No. It's because there was something about cheating with weighted dice. Ah. Yeah. What a cheater. What a cheater. It's just funny because I did that fun fact. Cheating with magic powers is way better than cheating with weighted dice. I did a fun fact about how to cheat with dice. Yeah. Yeah, it's It good. was so fun. I know you and remember factual. all. And there were how many ways to cheat with dice? A lot. Exactly. Chapter 48. <laughs> Here we go. Following the craft. And, you know, we get some Avendasora leaves. We do. And I really hoped that no one was going to enter the ways in oh, this chapter. Okay, okay, okay. Chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, did. that's like the primary place we've seen these, but we it have is, gotten yeah. them in non-Ways chapters too. I don't know. At the beginning, I think we have. Maybe. Pretty sure. I don't know. I can double check, but I think they had to do with like Nynaeve and healing and medicine and stuff. I'm looking at you a little skeptically, but that's okay. No, no. The first chapter we got the three leaves on the vine was in chapter 16 of the Eye of the World called The Wisdom. Oh. That was long before we'd even it's heard like of The Ways. It's like a dual meaning picture it is well also because a Avendisora, lot of them are dual meaning the avendasora leaves are from the tree of life okay which Avendisora. is like you know i know yeah yeah, yeah. i know okay but anyway yeah tree of life there okay, you go it doesn't even matter healing i don't care at all the craft it doesn't matter so <laughs> <laughs> so we're back with the women in Egwene's point of view and they are arriving in tier and here is where i get my realism what do you mean? Remember a couple episodes back, I was complaining that Perrin didn't get sick at all on the boat? Oh, yeah. Right. And I was like, okay. has he ever been on a boat before? Because he doesn't even mention how, like, if, it's if you don't get to sick, be on yeah. a boat. If you don't get sick, I guess that wouldn't even be a thought that, like, crashed Yeah, it's mind. not even, like, getting sick, but it's just, like, you feel different. 
That's on a, fair. Like traveling on a boat. Yeah. And I thought no one mentioned anything about that. And well, here we, we get it. We certainly get it here. Everyone is seasick from this boat travel. Yeah, no one's doing good, basically. Yeah, and at first, I'm really surprised that they didn't get on a faster, better ship at Erangel. But then we learn very quickly that the captain didn't stop there and went straight on through. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like a time jump for us. So we're going to have to like keep tabs. Well, especially because it is such a... It's a really slow ship. Really slow. And they've really just slow. made it all the way to tier. So it's like yeah. we don't actually know where this lines up with like Matt and Tom's journey. And we also don't know how long... Well, maybe it was like three or four days yeah. riding yeah. to get from... It's hard to it's Aaron hard Gale to say. To Camelin, and now they have to go back, back, and so, then take a ship. So you should start looking for the moon cycles again. <laughs> there is no moons. No in this moon book. cycles. Oh, oh man. my okay. gosh. Maybe maybe Robert Jordan will do something like that to help us out. I doubt it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> am I in a negative mood? A little bit, maybe. maybe. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so we get that the women have given themselves fake names. So we have Jocelyn, Miriam. And Carla. Yeah. They they all have Ys in them in really weird places. So uh-huh. It's weird names. It's great. But they're also hiding their Aes Sedai rings. Yeah. And more specifically, Egwene has her terangrial on like a cord around her neck. Yes. Because she wants it touching her skin. Skin to skin contact. Things are getting a little bit. A little weird. A little weird with this terangrial. Yeah. Getting a little close to it. Let I don't know. Say. All right. So, we get our weekly Egwene dream update. Yeah, and she has no idea what they mean. Right. But we can kind of speculate. Okay. So, first we have the Shanchen. Okay. So, that means the Shanchen. Yeah. Okay. Okay, except here's the thing, though. What? You can't glaze over that. Because uh, oh. this is my <laughs> sketchy fact number two. Okay, okay, okay. I guess technically three. So, she keeps on bringing up the Shanchen stuff. Yeah. And it means nothing to us. Because Not really, yeah. we don't know where they are, what's going on. So I figured after I read this chapter again, I better start speculating about what this means. Okay. And so that's... Are you expecting them back now, like sooner than later? Or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably not this book. That would be a little surprising. Yeah. But well, there's not much there's room, not but much you never know. At this point. Never know. But I do think. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> okay. We'll also consider the fact that Egwene is for sure suffering from some serious PTSD. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But also, some of this has to do with Rand fighting the Shan Chen. Yeah. And so if the Rand, and so if the Shan Chen have somehow, you know, some of them are being controlled by some Forsaken, which are now loose, like everything, all the bad guys and are all sort of just like floating around in this limbo and we don't know where they are or what's going on and the issue is like there's 11 of them yeah. there's 11 of them it's right. not there's like there's one main bad guy no. or two or three or five or seven there's 11 independent forsaken that we know of that are doing things independently of each independently other of each other against each other kind of co-conspiring but kind of like but not really but they're backs. sort of aware of each other some of them are anyway yeah so i don't know but i think that Gabriel either being a Shan Chen or having some connection with the Shan Chen. Gotcha. That's why I just in in cahoots. In cahoots, you yeah. might say. Um, that's just what I thought. I need to start speculating about what all the Shan Chen stuff mean because Egwene is just a hundred percent writing it off. Yeah, and She's she like doesn't want to think about it. Yeah. It's like ah, Shan Chen, no. Yeah. Cut it out. Okay. Okay. So I Next... just had to say fair something yeah. about that. Next, we've got White Cloaks putting Master Luhan. In a huge tooth trap for bait. Yeah, that's bat. That's Perrin's mentor. Slash father figure. Slash father figure, not father. Right. Okay. Then we've got Perrin with a falcon on his shoulder. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. We've got Perrin choosing between the axe and the blacksmith's hammer. Right, which makes sense because we have all of this stuff about Perrin hating his axe so much. All the time. All the time. And he just wants the smith. <laughs> yeah. He wants the blacksmith blacksmith wants to do smithing Smithing. he was a smithery smithing okay (laughs) okay anything else on that nope okay he wants to go back to smithing 
We've got Matt dicing with the dark one and shouting, I am coming. And he seems to be shouting at her, but that doesn't make any sense to Egwene. Yeah, why would Matt be coming towards her? Saying, I am coming, dicing with the dark one. Okay. Yeah, keep yelling that. It sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Just say it again. Yell it out. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Good try, good try. That's one of the ones I had to be like, really? <laughs> but, you know, it's all, it's all good. Do you not pick up on that? You no, I get it. it. Everyone I get picks it. up on it. I get it. There's but it's so like, you, why you got to say that? Because it's funny. Because I'm 12? Because <laughs> it's funny. Uh, okay. <laughs> now we go on to the Rand stuff. So we have Rand sneaking through the darkness towards Kalendor. And while he's doing that sneaking, stuff is happening. There's six men and five women. Eleven for sake. Eleven. Some hunting, some ignoring him. Ugh. Also important. And some are trying to guide him to the crystal sword. Because they want it. Yeah, that would kind of make sense. Like yeah, yeah. Because we what got Swan that. had said. Yeah. Some are trying to stop him. Yeah. But some can't really see like where he is. He's like flashing in and out. It's kind of weird. It is weird. Can't really see him properly. It reminds me of when the whole Fane thing, like Fane could sense Rand, but then sometimes not sense Rand. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then we've got one of the men with eyes of flame, sounds a lot like our friend Ishi, who wants Rand dead with a desperation, and she knows that to be Beelzebub. Right. Then we've got Rand in a dry, dusty chamber. Right, with, with the little dragons. The little dragons settling into on his, his skin. Butt. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't specify where, but, yeah. you know, it's his butt. But. Yeah, and then we've got Ran confronting a horde of Shan Chen, and then Ran confronting her and the women with her, and one of them, the women who are with her, is a Shan Chen. Okay. Yeah. It's all weird. It's all speculation. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You got anything for that? Nope. Those are hard. Those, Those are hard are ones. Those are difficult. Okay. Yeah. But, hey, 11 Forsaken. Yeah, yeah, we do get that confirmation, and then we get a lot more Shan Chen stuff, which is why now it's on my radar. Over and over and over. Yeah, it's going up on the murder board. Okay. Shan Chen question mark. Maybe for next book. Maybe. Oh yeah, that would like make we, sense. That there's we're still more some books in the up. series, so like you know. I know you it could make be that joke book. literally every episode. I'm over it. Thanks. At least once a book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every episode. Okay, so they are arriving at the dock at Tier now and Nynaeve and Elaine come up from the rooms and Nynaeve is clearly like not doing so well either but doesn't really want to show it to Egwene to Egwene yeah and so they get off the boat they get their horses Egwene notes literally about this place and I mean like I sort of get it like it's a new place that we've never been to like the biggest thing to note here is how muddy the streets are yeah and they wear clogs <laughs> and they wear clogs and I mean, it's cool. Okay. Yeah. So, plus the Stone of Tear is important. It is. So it's like a mountain. Yeah, but it was made with the power. Yeah. But they yeah. don't want to talk about that. Earth, air, and fire. Because they hate the power. Because <laughs> they hate it so much. Yeah. So, but we do get a note that the Aes Sedai now think that they couldn't do anything even like remotely similar. Yeah. I bet not even Egwene could. Make another Heart of the Stone. Yep. Make another building out of the earth. I guess so, but like, <laughs> maybe. I think so. You think like just two? Okay, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I think they could. I think they're strong. Okay. I think they're stronger than anyone knows. Making buildings. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like that's such... Okay, sure. Because yeah. Gwen can do the earth stuff. No, I get it, but it's okay. like, what's the... Okay, to There's what no end point. though? <laughs> it's nothing. Like, just... I mean, possibly could they could. I'm just making a note of how strong I think that they are. Okay, That's fair, all? fair. Okay. Gosh. Okay. So, Gwen and Nynaeve are like worse off than before. They're so pissed off at each other. They're, they aren't even talking. This is bad. To each other. Yeah. So, they ride off into the city, and Nynaeve says they have to find Leandrin and the others, but without alerting anyone to their presence, and she admits that she doesn't have any ideas. Yeah, and they were throwing up the entire boat ride, so they didn't even plan anything. No, and even if they did try to plan something, it's not like anyone's actually communicating effectively, so they wouldn't have come up with a very good plan. No, it would have been terrible. And it seems so awkward and uncomfortable, and it's like a weird power dynamic shift. Super weird. Like, it's not good. No, and this is Egwene's whole thing about how I'm not a child anymore, I'm your equal now. But Nynaeve doesn't feel that way, and yeah. I have no idea. It's all, it's terrible. 
it's all thrown into a, you know, it's bad muddled mess. So Elaine speaks up and says that she thinks they should hire a thief taker like in Camelin. Yeah. Like her in. Yeah. Like yeah. a private eye. Private eye. Yeah. So then Egwene says, all right, let's go to an inn and ask the innkeeper to hire us a thief taker, which is like. No, that's it gets, a terrible it gets, plan. Yeah, it's so bad. That's such a terrible plan, Egwene. Like everything Egwene says is bad. But also, like Elaine's plan is like it's worse. Well, Elaine is just. <laughs> well, I guess stupid. we could go stay at the, <laughs> like with the nobility. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I could pull my royalty well, card. Okay, yeah, because Nynaeve says like no idiot, no ins, and I just think good call. Like, they have no idea what's going on here. Leandrin, or whoever set this trap for them, will definitely be watching the inns for their arrival. And I think, to that point, you don't think that they're watching the docks? Yeah. Yeah, there's like, a there's lot of... Like, there's literally one way into Tyr from Tarvalin. If you're, like, gonna get there in any timely manner. Yeah. It's like you're coming by You boat. think that no one's watching the docks? Like, you're not as sneaky as you think you are right now like there's no way like there anyone is already alerted to the fact that they're there so that's bad yeah especially considering that not just leandrin and the black asia and (laughs) and lanfear or whoever yeah right it's also other people are watching them and reporting back to camelin guy and like if camelin guy knows like yeah that's bad yeah but i mean like i like i get where she's coming from but also realistically you should already know that they know you're here. Yeah. yeah. Like you're walking into a trap. So. Yes. So Nynaeve says we won't stay in an inn. And Egwene thinks I won't give her the satisfaction of asking. It's like she doesn't care. I don't know. But it's just like. It's every- a very petty squabble. It's so petty. Like Egwene yeah. really pisses me off. And so Elaine asks where will we stay then? And then Elaine offers letting herself be known she thinks that Camelin is tight with Tyr and anyone would help her. And I just said, I want to live in her world. In her fantasy world. <laughs> it looks like a really nice place to live. It does. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Where she's just, everybody wants to help her. Everyone's going to be so nice and kind to her. You know what? They could definitely get a room, but they would immediately get captured. And murdered if that's what they want to see happen to the girls yeah, yeah. absolutely it's so but like they could th- it's just a bad plan it's so terrible and so Nighty just basically ignores her and says that she will know where to stay when she sees it and now i'm sure i'm missing a bunch of details here probably maybe important ones but i don't care like there's literally two pages of boring what people are wearing yeah the biggest thing i got out of that is like clogs yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you don't want to know that some men are shirtless, but others aren't. It's not really important right now. And there's also women in the streets. Okay, but to but be the fair. the men wear shoes, but sometimes the women wear shoes, but sometimes also the women don't wear shoes. Okay, I get your point. I get your point. I get where you're going with that. <laughs> it's important for culture building for, like, later on when you want to know more about, like, Terrans. So. I don't. But if you did, this would be, like, really good information. It's so terrible. I do think there's a spelling mistake in my book, though. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because it's talking about when Nynaeve's, like, looking for the different houses. It says, she was wondering which shop might sell those platforms when Nynaeve suddenly turned her black down an alleyway between a long, narrow, two-story house. Oh, I actually did a double take in my book as well. Yeah. And I think that her black is her black stallion. Oh, okay. Her I was horse. It turned Or her turned her, like, back down. But that doesn't make much sense either. Turns her back down doesn't make sense. It's her horse. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because I actually did a double take on that sentence as well. I couldn't figure that one out. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't know how I'm supposed to be reading this right now. Yeah. But hey. She turned her black, like her horse. Okay. Her black stallion. Gotcha. Which, have we (laughs) talked about? (laughs) No, we haven't talked (laughs) about it. Are going to talk about that horse? Let's talk about that horse. Yeah. Well, okay. So they ride around the city and then he finally leads them down some back alley and we get a note that she has named her horse Gaiden. Yeah, for one specific And Egwene, <laughs> in her head, is super rude about it. Oh, yeah. So rude. Yeah. Oh, what a terrible name for a horse. And oh, she thinks she's fooling someone about who she's named that horse after. You know, it's, it's like, also... Egwene. Yeah. 
God. But I mean, also, if you're like trying to go undercover into a city where they really, really, really hate Aes Sedai. Don't name your horse name Warder. Your, yeah, yeah, don't name your horse that. Like, yeah. <laughs> not a good idea Although, either. Although, she's probably not calling the horse Warder out loud. Yeah, I was going to say that too. But like, it's still just. I know. Whatever. So it turns out this place that they've come to is the local wisdom. Nynaeve could tell because of the herbs hanging in the window. Now, an older woman opens the door and Nynaeve says they have come because she wants something to settle her queasy stomach. And then the woman says her name is Mother Guyena? Gwena. 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 And she is called a wise woman and then tells them to come in. Yeah. So once they're in, Nynaeve quizzes the woman on what kind of tea she will give her, but turns out it's some kind Nynaeve hasn't heard of and tastes terrible. Yeah. It's a funny little exchange that happens like with them and it's a couple pages long. It's quite long. And we're not going to talk about the like the different herbs and stuff. Uh, so. No, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> so the wise woman asks Nynaeve if she follows the craft. Ah, uh, ah. And then Nynaeve casually asks the woman if the rain will continue for much longer. And the woman is like, how would I know? I'm not a sea folk wind finder. That's I said I stuff. Yeah. Well... <laughs> so i mean there's a couple that's kind of a loaded <laughs> sentence yeah like there's a couple things we can do and take from that like number one in tier you don't talk about the weather or anything that's like too close to being an Aes Sedai witch yeah right it's like you stick to your healing stuff and delivering babies yeah and that's it which by the way she says women need nothing to deliver yeah. babies. yeah oh my god <laughs> as somebody who's less than two weeks away from delivering a baby you can go to hell mother Gwena. <laughs> yeah ah oh, they just need a warm towel yeah warm towel that's and tell it. them to suck it up a little bit maybe i don't know <laughs> hold her hand <laughs> just hold her hand pat her back yeah yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, that no. was, you know, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, right? Yeah, so, okay. well. But also we get the whole like sea folk wind finder thing who can like tell the weather or something. Right. But I mean, they're That's on the whole boats. listening to the wind thing too. Yeah, they're the boat people. Boat people. So then the woman barks at Nynaeve and starts quizzing her on herbs and stuff. And they go back and forth forever about herbs and healing remedies and everything. And it's all very boring especially to Egwene, who has the worst attitude already. She does. Oh, and I gotta say, but Egwene... I, no, it's bad. But I have to also commend Nynaeve here, because this is an excellent plan, I think. Oh, yeah. She, like, knocks out of the park. She does a fantastic job of, like, building credibility. And it seems to be, like, a little bit impulsive, like, a, a, a pretty impulsive plan. Yeah, a little bit. But it, it's working. It goes. It's, like, build rapport and talk about stuff you know, and Which there's going to be, like, mutual trust. Like, Nynaeve had it in her. Like, this isn't Nynaeve's strong suit to be like building relationships with people it's not but it is a hundred percent in her wheelhouse of talking wisdom to wisdom sure so it's like i understand that because completely. this is the stuff she they're, gets this is what she knows yeah but they're yeah. not nice to each other when they're like communicating like mother Gwena sort and Nynaeve, of. they're yeah. not exactly it's a the competition nice. it is and it's like one upsmanship and it's like oh well i don't know that or what else could it be called yeah. oh this that or the other thing so it's like a direct competition but there are some things where Nynaeve is like oh i didn't know that i'll remember that good yeah. tip and yeah. so she starts like building this relationship with this woman yeah well and mother gwena seems like a strong woman too yeah she's compared to mistress luhan yeah so yeah i like that but Egwene completely loses her attitude and cuts in reminding Nynaeve that she is not a wisdom any longer or has she forgotten <laughs> terrible fuck you Egwene. like i just can't you know what Nynaeve doesn't have to stop studying her herbs no and you know what this immaturity like is really showing through yeah at this point and i get that it's hard to travel with someone for a really long time yeah but like and like you're a year out of your village and everything and you forget so. how young they actually all are yeah and this really puts it into perspective it does so this is what I'm saying about how I like Nynaeve when I'm not in her head. I get that, yeah. Because if, in Nynaeve's if, head, if it'd be I terrible. Wanna, like, if this chapter was happening in Nynaeve's head, I'd be thinking about how petty and everything she's being to Egwene. Yeah. Because we'd get all the same thoughts about Egwene just from Nynaeve, right? But in this scenario, I'm annoyed with Egwene. Yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> so Nynaeve says something back about Egwene used to want to learn too. And then Elaine is totally sick of this and asks Mother Gwenna 
what the cure is for two people who won't stop arguing. Which is hilarious. And I gotta say, I feel sorry for Elaine because she's had to put up with these two bickering and not talking for the entire trip. Yeah. Yeah. So it turns out the cure for that is take them out back and stick their heads in the water buckets until they agree to stop arguing. Yeah, it's the best. Effective. I love the fact that she's like, and for some reason, nobody tells anyone what the cure is, so I keep getting customers. Yeah. Because no one's going to admit it. And I charge them for it. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. And so Elaine laughs and Nynaeve says something like lighthearted and the wise woman is now like grinning. No thanks to Egwene here. No, this was all Nynaeve. And Elaine. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. And yeah, no thanks to Egwene here because she is still freaking miserable, by the way. And the Terangrial is still touching her skin. Okay. Which I need to just like... Just as something I'm going to just throw at the wall over here. Sure, yeah. Because you can never have too many predictions. Yeah, uh, that's true. Okay, do it. Maybe she's so grumpy. Uh-huh. Because this is the dagger effect. Okay, how? Go go further with that. Well, remember how I was like, this reminds me of Matt with his dagger and how possessive he was getting? Yeah. And how he sort of turned grumpy and inward and... Okay, so you're talking about like the ring is having some sort of influence on Egwene's yeah. attitude. Uh-huh. For some kind of reason. Because her precious is touching, now touching her bare skin, and she's like super irritable. Okay. But she can't even see the humor yeah, yeah. in this. Well, the big difference that we could like notably she see. She can't even pretend to see the humor be- or like even remotely understand what Nynaeve is trying to accomplish here. I like it, okay. this is a okay. good pl- ass plan. Like put your bickering aside for literally one second, Egwene. Yeah. But you can't. And you can't, which okay. is like really bad. Okay, let's watch that then. Yeah. So that's just the only thing I can really like pin on. Yeah, I mean, the dagger was the cursed thing. No, no, no. I don't like, actually this, think so... that this is Shatter Logoth evil. God, but like, what's the effect? Similar. Why? There's got to be something here. Yeah. And my yeah. big, like, the why is the big question. Because it's but... definitely, she's definitely possessive of it. And now it's sitting on her bare skin, which might be having some effect on her mood. Okay. Potentially. Potentially. I like it. Okay, so we get that this woman's first name is Aelhuin. Aelhuin. Yeah, Aelwin. 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 Oh, I can say that. That's yeah. okay. It's spelled bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of okay. course. <laughs> That's how I've always pronounced it. So, I, like, I don't. Okay. I didn't actually double check this one from the audiobooks or anything. So, uh, I'm it's, just pretty sure it's, it's very um, Lord of the Rings sounding. A little bit. Okay, so she says that they should come by again for some tea. Or actually, why don't they just stay for supper? Huh. All right. So Nynaeve says, yes, please. And if you have an extra bedroom, I'll actually hire it for the three of us. And she says she has three bedrooms. Her daughters are grown and married and her husband is dead. Yeah. And she won't charge them for it if she decides to let them stay. Yeah. She's a little bit skeptical here. Of Which is women. fair. It's like you don't just let anybody who walks in. Well, even... and they're like these fine looking ladies riding, riding these fine looking horses and stuff. And she, she puts together a good argument. Yeah. Well, it's a little odd that they're here. It is. No, she like, and definitely and picks she's up like, on and that. And she's like, and Nynaeve, you know enough to be a wisdom yourself. Like you should have your own, yourself, yeah, you should have your own shop. Not wise one. That's Aiel. Wise woman. Wise woman. Sure. So she wants to know why they're here in Tyr, what they're running from or after. Yeah. And Nynaeve says that they're after someone who stole things from her mother. Technically true. Yeah. And they did murder and they want justice done. Yeah. All technically true. Right. So Mother Gwenna says... That this is a job for your men folk. Yeah, it's like, where are the dudes to do this? Why and are you Nynaeve doing it? And Nynaeve says that those who might be here in their place were killed. Yeah, So okay. some nice Aes Sedai lying. A little bit. It's like skirting the truth. Well, and in Egwene's head, because this is all from Egwene's point of view. Yeah. She's like, oh, she's not telling the whole... Sh-. And she's like angry about it. Oh, she's sounding like an Aes Sedai. Oh, I see she's living by the three oaths already. Yeah, she's being a brat about it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a good fucking thing. That's a good skill to have. Like, that's like the best part about Aes Sedai other than the magic. We're all accepted from the White Tower hunting the Black Aja. Yeah. Like, no. no. <laughs> Especially in Tear. Yeah, like, come don't on. do that. So Nynaeve tells the lady that these thieves are dark friends... They are women, but they are dangerous. And that's why we can't seek an in. They may be watching for us. 
And so Gwyneth says, well, I do believe that there are some who are dangerous. Yeah. But like I get the fact that women are dangerous. Yeah. But you know who's not dangerous in yeah. her mind? Yeah. Dark friends. Yeah. They're fools. <laughs> They're idiots. Yeah. There's no, you know, fetches or fang fish to let the dark one out of his prison. Which is bad. Yeah. Well, it's this like, is that southern mentality. The southern mentality of like snow doesn't exist and neither do fades. Yeah. So, well, you know. Well, Egwene is like, what the heck is a fetch or a fang fish? <laughs> she doesn't know. She doesn't know the lingo. <laughs> no, yeah. she does not. Yeah. And Gwena says, if you have proof, you should go to the defenders of the stone and they'll help you. Yeah. And Nynaeve is like, well, when we catch them, we'll have proof. Yeah. We'll it's like, we don't the, have proof. We'll have the things yeah. that they stole. And so Nynaeve mentions that the things that they stole aren't valuable to anyone else, just old things. Yeah, which again is like a kind uh, of a truth. Yeah. And yeah. then we get a shit ton of information about how all this like hearthstone yeah. is being found like in the water brought in by all these fishing nets. I mean, you say all that, but it's like it's a story that she's like, hey, I get that it's old stuff that doesn't have value, but sometimes old stuff has value. Yeah. It's like Antiques Roadshow. You go and you find some old stuff. Turns out that it's worth like a ton of money. Thrift shopping. You're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, no, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah. So this. It's not like a bunch of old stuff. It's like a fisherman found some stuff, like three plates and a cup or something like that. Yeah. And then he but was then able to buy keeps... some more boats turning up no they were looking for more stuff but no one's found any but they're looking for it but it's like not there anymore because the crazy old guy didn't remember where exactly he was fishing where it was so yeah <laughs> it's not like some secret catch of okay so you don't want to hear my theory of turax collection it's in the ocean in now the ocean that's <laughs> washing up <laughs> on the shore it's on the opposite side of the continent yeah it's what do you have you heard of currents? I have, but that's not the way currents work. <laughs> you don't know in this world. <laughs> they just like made up, <laughs> made up ocean currents. Yeah. That's like a, like a six months later, it's on the other side yeah. of the world mm -hmm. and it's all Turax collection. And it's washing up. <laughs> See, more Sean Chang I love it. It all fits together it perfectly. It all fits. Yeah. I think this is important. Yeah. It reminds me of that really cheap puzzle we bought where the pieces all kind of fit together, but they but didn't. But they didn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you're just trying to steer me off and I'm exactly on the right path. You sound, I'm going to tell you, you're 100% right. Thank you, you. You got it. Okay, cool. So Gwena decides that obviously they can stay. Like she's like talking to them, like she believes them. And Nynaeve did a good enough job and Egwene didn't ruin it completely. Yeah. So... She decides, you know what? This is a job for a man. Yeah. So I'm going to go get you a thief catcher to do this work for you. And he's and not a know, swordsman. This is almost like Matt luck. They like manifested that they need to get a thief catcher. <laughs> get a place catcher. to stay. Get a thief catcher. And it's all coming together. Yeah. All right. And then because they didn't even say, oh, what about thief takers or whatever the hell. Ooh. It, she came up with it herself. Is it working too well? No. Is it too convenient? No. I think that this lady is legit like, yeah, go get your stuff back. Let's do it. Avenge your brothers and fathers and husbands. I'll help you. My yeah. daughters are all moved out now. Yeah. All right. And we get a name for the thief catcher. Yeah. It's Julian Sandar. Ooh. Yes. Okay. He's the best of them. Okay. The best of the best. Sure. So she slaps on some clogs yep. and heads out to go get him. Here we go. Yeah. Now, Egwene insults Nynaeve by saying that she is an Aes Sedai like Moraine. Yeah, like you had to go there and compare Nynaeve to Moraine. And Elaine just hauls off and slaps her across the face. I, think, I love it. Go, Elaine. Yeah. Like, actually... Go, Elaine. That's like the straw that broke the camel's back. That's like, like exactly what it is. It's like Elaine's had enough. Yeah. You're getting slapped. She tells her that, you know, she's gone way too far. They have to live together or they will die together. Because this is bad. Yeah, yeah. Egwene could have easily ruined this for them. And then where are they staying? And they're more likely at being caught. And now they're getting help and all this stuff. And I mean, like, maybe my dark friend radar should go off a little bit. But, like, I really don't think so at this point. Okay. okay. Like, I think that this woman legit wants to help. She does seem like she's She good. left them alone in her house to go find this guy. Like. Yeah. 
And I mean, they had that whole, like, she clearly is a wise woman. She wasn't, clearly. wasn't and, faking it with no, Nynaeve. No, and I think Nynaeve was also a little bit feeling her out. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, not only yeah. was she establishing a relationship, but she was like, okay, are you actually who you sort of say you are? Although, a wise woman could also be a dark friend. Oh, of course. But, but it's like, like, what are the chances that the one person that Nynaeve turned her horse down yeah. an alleyway because no. you saw the herbs in the window yeah it's like what are the chances that person is like a dark friend yeah pretty slim i think probably anyway yeah so Egwene sort of goes harump fine well we'll live together but i don't have to like it yeah she's still like being a stubborn it's butt about it bad yeah uh, which makes me wonder if it's something else the spooky terangrail yeah like an outside influence gotcha. of some yeah, yeah, kind yeah. or you know Maybe she's just being an ass. It's p- completely possible. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yep. Okay, hey. Mm-hmm. This is good, though. Yeah, so we've got the girls in tier. Yep. We've got Matt and Tom on the way to rescue them, possibly. Slash, like, just meet up with them just to, and, like, like help here. their cause, maybe. Yeah. It's also kind of like a if we need to get everyone to tier, because that's the place to be, kind of like the whole Fama situation. It's like, how are we going to get them there? Murder plan. Murder plan. Murder plan on the murder board. Cool. You head off the tier. So. Excellent. And then we got, yeah, Moraine and Perrin and that crew all headed over. I have a question for you. Yeah. Where's Rand? Yeah, also on his way. Is he on his way? Is he here yet? No. Okay. So the girls got here first. The girls got there first. Gotcha. They have the fastest mode of transportation, although they had that slow boat. They had a slow boat. Ah! Matt I don't know. <laughs> and Tom are behind them. And then we got like Lan, Moraine, Loyal, Perrin, and Fael coming like probably by horse cross country yeah cross country yeah that's so, what i'm saying they'll all just sort of show up at this exact same moment on the same morning but just like in falma girls are here first yeah girls are here first just like last time okay okay i don't think it's gonna be exactly like last time <laughs> but with that being said i am gonna say that this is part of the pattern now yep it's part of the pattern Thank you for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, produced by Danny and Brett with Vince Lewick, Derek Benton, Michelle O'Brien, Moltude, Benjamin, Passion Socks, and Mozyme, with music by Audionautics.com. If you'd like to support us making great content and you're interested in extra bonus content like bonus episodes, Q&As, outtakes, early released episodes, unedited video released episodes, and exclusive merchandise, please visit patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast don't forget to check us out on social media on instagram and twitter you can find us at the wheel weaves podcast we love interacting with our fans and that's the best way to get a hold of us if you want to chat also you can join the conversation with other wheel of time fans with brett and myself over at our discord channel for spoiler free and spoiler full content don't forget to rate comment and subscribe and feel free to tell a friend about us because referrals really are the very best compliment thanks again for listening and this really is part of the pattern now